Okay, good morning everybody. Um, my name is Rainer Schlitzer from the Alfred Wegener Institute. Um, I will be teaching you most of today, so um, long session, but we will have breaks in between. Um, can, I, can I ask people who has never worked with ODV? Don't be shy. Nothing bad about it. So we have a number of people. Um, I also, uh, by compliment, I, I see that most of you have some experience with ODV. Uh, that will become an advantage later on, as you will see. So uh, during this web ODV part of the course, what I want to do is... No, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. So ultimately, um, what, what we will do during the web ODV session is most of the time do hands-on practice. So um, I'm, I'm showing certain things and I'm kind of expecting that you, you, you as pairs of participants having a, a working uh, connection to ORCA, to the VRE, that, that you follow uh, suite. And, and we do the same things. And ultimately, um, we will cover, uh, when, when you're here at this home page, and I'm assuming uh, we have enough people who are at this uh, stage, oops, damn it. We will cover, hmm, that's why I would like to have it. Um, a whole suite of services, and they are designed um, satisfying typical needs of data uh, providers and users. So we will start with service that does import and aggregation of files into large collections. That will be the first thing that we do. Um, then there will be a service that is dealing with quality control. I, I think most of the participants now realize how important quality control is. You, you cannot just assume when you get data from different sources, all is good. Um, so we need to have some tools to check the quality. And if we find outliers, to have ways of flagging them so that later these can be filtered out. So that will be uh, the, um, the objective of the second one. Uh, once you have a clean data system, at least if you are kind of scientifically oriented, then you would like to analyze and, and visualize the data set. And uh, this will be the third um, service that we will visit, maybe only a short uh, amount of time. And once we have these huge and beautiful data sets, then uh, we also need to have a, a possibility of making subsets and getting data out. And that will be the fourth um, service here, Web ODV Data Extractor. How to get it out and, and maybe share with some people. Um, and the focus here will be to make uh, a subset to your needs. As we will see, we will use different criteria to just define exactly the part of the data that we will then uh, extract and export. One usage in the C Data Cloud project will be um, to pass on what you have extracted to, to the next um, processing phase into Diva, for instance. So we, we see the sequence of, of services also as part of the workflow of the entire project, right? And WebODV and Diva uh, will work together smoothly, hopefully already today, but, but definitely this will be a high priority uh, thing that we are working on. Um, so can I see a show of hands of, of those PCs that will follow my hands-on practice so that I uh, have a feeling on 
where I should look. Okay, so every row has at least one PC working on. Um, so in the, in the entire uh, remainder of the web ODV session, we will actually put our hands on. And for this purpose, usually I, I will uh, show, I will demonstrate what you are supposed to do. But then also there will be uh, like tasks given to you when you actually practice for five, ten minutes. I, I'm walking around the room seeing how things are, are going. And then we, we go on for the next subject, me again showing what to do, right? So that will be like the mode of operation. While I'm showing things here and, and you are lost, please raise your hand so that early on I have an indication that for one pair of people or, or several, there's something stopping you for progressing. And, and then we will try, hopefully there will be some some additional experts in the room um, helping you, uh, we will try to keep the group synchronized so that we walk together through the entire part of the course, right? Um, okay, so let's start with import. Oh, I should say, some of these services like uh, the import service and the uh, data extractor they have their own interface. We, we like to make the, the necessary steps as easy as possible to reach the uh, objective, like importing data or extracting data. The, the middle two um, services, they are different. In, for these services, um, you will see that in the web browser, we have tried to create an interface that is very, very similar to ODV. And the interactivity that will be possible in these two services, the objective is to have it 99 or 100% exactly the same behavior as ODV as a desktop application behaves. So if you have experience with desktop ODV, there should be basically no learning necessary. And from, from my query, it seems like the majority has some experience, so hopefully that should be easy. Those of you who have never worked with ODV, uh, I will still demonstrate how to, um, how to get this functionality. Uh, and if you forget, then ask your neighbor who has experience to just remind you how was that done? How was this done? And so on, right? So let's start with um, import. So everybody, please click on this web ODV import left mouse click. And everybody should see uh, a screen like this. And let's, let's make it a habit. If you don't see what, what I have here, then please raise your hand early on so that I have an indication. If, if I don't see any hand, I, I assume you have it, right? And, and move on. So please, if you want to keep floating with me, uh, don't be shy, raise your hand if it doesn't work. So the, the import service uh, is uh, designed having a sequence of steps that are laid out in this navigator bar at the top. And they represent the kind of natural steps that, that you would always have to do when you want to import uh, files. First step being, uh, well, select the type of the import. Within the project, the main purpose will be to import C datanet files, but also um, this importer supports other uh, imports, like favorite imports also include data of Argo profile or trajectory data. 
in the products group, uh, people depend uh, more and more on World Ocean Database, which is down here. And there are several other sources of data that potentially could be imported. Today, we will practice uh, three types. And the first one and most important will be CDataNet, but then also we will do an Argo profile import and World Ocean Database down here. So as first step of the import, decide what kind of data are you importing. And for now, everybody please have CDataNet uh, checked, and this is the default. So if you, if you start this first step, it, it will be um, checked, CDataNet, but uh, just make sure it, it is. Realize, just like in my case, um, the page does not show, uh, how, to, how can I scroll? Ah, okay. So that's all that we have to do uh, with selecting the type then please, in the navigation bar, click on the second step, select files. Everybody should see this uh, screen. Anybody doesn't? So, uh, in order to select files, please click on this large uh, blue button. What happens, uh, you will now see uh, the tree of your uh, private workspace. And I, I have provided some import files that we will use under this import course material. So open, go into this directory, click on this uh, folder symbol. Then you will see um, there are three subdirectories that we will visit again and again during this Web ODV course. For now, we want to go into this import subdirectory. And in this import subdirectory, you see three subdirectories self explaining names. The, the SDN uh, directory, this is the one we want to go in now because. This is where the C DataNet files are located. So I'm assuming everybody is seeing the same tree, yeah, right? Um, oops. So we are opening the C DataNet uh, tree. And actually, I, I have provided C DataNet files in two subdirectories. Maybe you want to look into one, and, and you will see. Uh, it's a long list of files. Actually, it's, uh, I think, 500 per directory. And what's very important, if you scroll through the end, there is this magic data.csv file. For those of you who have done CDataNet imports, then you might know already, this is the file containing CDI metadata for all these files. And it's very important that you include this file in the import. Otherwise, you would not see the uh, CDI metadata, right? In our case, we will simply select all of these files and then it's automatically included. But in principle, you could select each individual one. You could make your customized uh, selection of files. Right now, I'm, I'm going to the top, trying to find the easiest way. Oops. I, I closed the directory again. Um, and I'm, I'm selecting all the files from this directory one by, by just clicking on the selection uh, box. And just to make it a, a near realistic import, let's also import um, the files from the second one. So in total, it should be uh, around a thousand files or something like this. So it's, it's not completely realistic because in real life, uh, you might have ten thousands of files. And for this whole C data net aggregation that we are doing uh, once per year, it will actually be 2 million files. Uh, for now, I've made sure 
these different groups, we don't select 2 million files because then it will take too long. Um, on, on this page, it's very important that you scroll down oops, to the end of the page and hit this apply button. Okay. That completes the selection of these files. So you select them all. When you are satisfied, you click apply. And just realize sometimes the apply button might not be visible, but it's, it's down there. And, and you have to click it. Otherwise, there will be no files uh, selected. OK, I'm, I'm going back. So now we completed two steps. We, we told the system what kind of files, and then we selected the files to be imported. Uh, then we have to tell the system where should the output be written to. That's step number three. Click on it, please. So I'm assuming everybody is seeing this page. Uh, click on select output directory. Again, you will see your private workspace here. Um, for this course, we, we have arranged it that there is an imports directory into which we should make all our imports. So this one here, the imports directory, please select it. And just like for the other page, make sure you scroll down and you hit this apply button. That completes the selection. Now it's telling you, ah, so it takes the directory that you select as the root and inside it will create a, a, a new directory with a unique name and, and this is like an, a randomly chosen string just to make sure it will be unique and inside this one you will find the outputs eventually, right? Okay, um, so I don't see any hands, so I'm assuming we successfully did all the three steps. Now comes uh, actually starting the import. That's step number four. Go on to click on start import. And now in the background, uh, actually the server will do this work. And uh, potentially, this can take quite a while. Just imagine you had chosen 100,000 files. This will take. So the solution here is, um, and, and this message uh, tells you, that you will receive an email once this import step has completed. Once you get the email, then the output will be in the directory that we have chosen. And for these 1,000 files, it, it can take a little while. So what we can do, um, go back to our home page by, by clicking on this button. Remember, this button here plays a central role. When, whenever you want to come back to, to this private works, uh, no, to the home page of the VRE, uh, press it. Just to come back to this page. And then uh, we should wait for uh, the email to arrive. Anybody has received an email already? I'm not sure whether I'm notified here. Claudia? When, when an email arrives, do I get a dialogue? Or? How can I find out where? My account, so I want to check. Oh, so it will come to you. <laughs> Did anybody receive the email? I, I could say we, we already know how to speed up this import considerably. Right now, in this setup, there the implementation copies all the input files from one place to another and then actually starts the import. And that is unnecessary and takes too much time. In your case? 
Did you get? No. Now, we are waiting today an unnecessary uh, long amount of time. Uh, it's already on the schedule of, of improvements we know about. Uh, after the course, we, we will speed this up. And it will be sped up considerably. Um, we might take the opportunity uh, to ask questions if there are questions up to this point. Yes. And I don't know, does he need to have a microphone to ask the question? Aaron, um, when you were importing, there were two data.csv files in each directory, but when you imported as only one, what, what happens with the, that? They both go into the import, or is only one taken through? Good question. Um, in, in principle, there should have been two. Uh, I, I actually never uh, checked the list. So there's no issue if there's files with the same name? No, is there an issue with files with the same name? There shouldn't be because they come from separate source directories. But maybe because we are making this copy, which I consider totally unnecessary, maybe that overwrites one with the other. So that's another reason to skip this, uh, to delete this copying phase. In, in the end, mm, I, I can assure you, we will keep all the CSV files. Because if, if one gets lost, uh, this, uh, there is a set of stations imported which will not get the CDI metadata. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh my goodness. Merit, is Orca working hard? <laughs> I I like real tests. <laughs> so did so nobody received the email? The magic email? Merit, can you see all these processes? How many are there? 32? <coughs> um, so overall, <clears throat> uh, well, while waiting, we, uh, before the coffee break at 10.45, right? We have a coffee break. So we have like 20 minutes before that. What, what I will ask you as a hands-on exercise to perform imports of the uh, other two types. And uh, you have it? Well, obviously the coordinator gets some privilege. Maybe that is built into Orca. <laughs> if Remer gets highest priority. So it's, it's just a matter of time until you receive that email. And, and ultimately, right now, we, we don't need this output uh, file, so we might just continue, right? So in my case, uh, I, I still don't have it. And um, so in the remaining 20 minutes before the coffee break, please do imports on your own. So, uh, well, the first one I step you through again so that we have done it twice together and the third one you are doing completely on your own. So in order to do it, everybody please be on this homepage, yes? 
then click on WebODV import. Now please let us import Argo profile data. So select this first entry, Argo profile. Second step, select files. Click on the big blue button. Again, you are taken to your private workspace. Go into import, uh, no, ODV course material. Then import directory. There is a directory containing the Argo files. Open it. You will see there are three Argo profile uh, data files. Uh, they are distributed actually as NetCDF files. Those of you who are knowledgeable about this format, um, blocked. Uh, is it blocked? So it's only Michelle who can do this <laughs> right now. <laughs> But if, if you do it, you block the others. So I'm putting you onto moral pressure. So anyway, um, once Peter gives green light that we uh, start this, then, well, we, we can already select them, right? And you can already select the output directory. We will again select the imports directory. And uh, we are just um, staying short of not clicking start import. But that's the procedure. And now having you uh, stepped you the import process twice, maybe that's all you need on education. And once you receive the first email, then you might want to, to start this second import. And there is uh, a third set of data, World Ocean Database files. Um, and if you have time, you can also perform this uh, import as well. Okay. With this, I'm, I'm just stepping down and, and walking in the room. Unless there are questions. Taco has one uh, microphone. Um, yes, the question is, uh, why do you need to do the first step to select the file? And the second step to select the file is the question. Okay, Taco um, was wondering why there was a necessity uh, to have this first step to, to select the, the type. For ODV, it's important to know what kind of format is coming. And for instance, several popular formats in the world uh, use NetCDF. So it's not that simple to determine the type just from the file name. So I'm, I'm, that's why. I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, that satisfies. I, I want to make a, a general request to all the uh, audience. I mean, we as teacher, we, we realize that this course here is very much an experiment. This uh, setup of the VRE is highly experimental. Um, and certainly, this is not the, um, the version that we will have at the end of this project. So, um, we would recommend and, and uh, invite comments from you, just like the comments from Taco, um, steps that are totally unclear, felt unnecessary, felt too complicated, uh, things that you find missing that you would like to have. Uh, make notes. Um, we will try to have like 15 or 20 minutes at the end of the web ODV session to, uh, to talk about it. But just in case this, we, we are running out of time, we would appreciate having your comments. And, and it could be that you just take a photograph of your notes that you have taken and, 
and sent the web ODV um, comments to me by email. Uh, we very much appreciate that will help us um, to do further development. Okay. Are there other questions to this point? Uh, I, I think. Hmm? I, I can't hear it. Oh, so uh, who has received that email? Okay, Orca is working. So those of you who have it, um, in principle, you can submit your next uh, job. I'm, I'm more liberal maybe than Peter, and I would actually encourage you to, to put heavy load on Orca. Merit, fine with you? I, I don't hear. Okay, that's fine. There was um, one thing that I forgot to, well, I didn't forget, I purposely forgot to explain you, is that um, when we did the setup and we went to the workspace, this workspace actually has much more functionality than just a view, but you can actually drag and drop your own files also into it, and you can download the files that you see. I don't know, maybe you, some of you have already tried it. It looks very similar to, if you know OwnCloud, it's, it, it's actually called NextCloud. But this, um, I got the question already, can I use my own files? Yes, you can. So if you have uh, CDI files, for example, uh, uh, ODV files, and you've downloaded them, and you, you could drag and drop them into a space here, and then work with it. I wouldn't do it now, but, uh, uh, but that it's foreseen that it, actually we, we foresee that we're going to make a connection from the CDI service in the end to this, so that you can, you do not have to download it, but you can just say, okay, I've got this in my, um, in my box in CDI, and I can just move it into it. And there's uh, share buttons here, and there's all kinds of uh, actions. You, you can try it. It's not uh, part of the course, but, uh, but you know that there are more options there. So how are we doing? Succeeding with imports? Um, uh, in the last two minutes of this first uh, part of the WebODV session, let us together investigate what we find in the imports directory. Okay, so everybody please let's go inside this imports and in my case, because I've only uh, done one of the imports, I only have one subdirectory. If you have done two, you should have two subdirectories. If you have done all three, you should have three subdirectories. Let's investigate what you will find. So I'm going into one of them. <clears throat> and what actually happens is that ODV will import in the background in, in Hamburg at DKZ actually, will take all the files that you have selected, import and create an ODV collection that contains all the data. And an ODV collection is characterized by two things. A an, an file that has .odv as extension, that's this one here, and a directory that has .data as last part of the name. And you should see these two. These two components, they make up an ODV collection. I have seen some people being adventurer and getting into these subdirectories and manipulating uh, these files. Please never do. It's very easy to corrupt an ODV collection by messing around with these files. Please keep them alone now that you know an ODV collection has these two parts, the .odv file and then this .data directory. In this .data directory, that's actually where the, where the meat of the collection is, where all the data, the metadata, everything is stored. So if you mess around with these, it's very easy to destroy the co collection and 
um, then it ODV might not be able to, to open it. So that's, that's a word of caution. But the third thing that I want to emphasize, um, you should see um, this analysis log file here, which actually is a TXT file. So when ODV makes an import, it does several things, analyzing the files, detecting any errors or unusual behavior, uh, before it then actually does the import. Any observation, any unusual things, they are recorded in this analysis uh, log file. So sometimes it might be useful to look into these files. Several people have clicked on it here in this VRE environment, and I'm doing the same, and they get uh, this error. And I, I just want to alert the next cloud people of the VRE that that text files could cannot be opened by, by just clicking on them. Maybe this is intended, but I don't know. Eventually, I think we want to make it possible that people edit and or view uh, text files in the VRE, right? Uh, so several people have shown me this error. Uh, so this is something that will be worked on. Okay, um, concerning web ODV imports, uh, are there any comments or questions that you want to make? If not, I, I can tell you that's all you, you need to know about making an import. Right here for the course, I have provided the import files in this course material, right? In real life, you will be um, responsible to, to get the files to your private workspace in the first place. And then you, you can start these imports. And with these comments, I, I would close the first part of the session and we have uh, half an hour of coffee break, I think. Yes, and, and please, we continue uh, 15 past 11 here.